Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfun.com. It's been a while since I've done a tool review. Well, that changes today. We're going to look at this desoldering gun. Now, I've got my Pros Kit SS331 desoldering station out. I've had this station for almost a year now and I did a review on it. I'll fire a link below in the description if you wanted to have a peek. As I had mentioned in that review, I had been longing for a proper desoldering tool for many years. And these things have come down in price now to the point where the average hobbyist can certainly justify getting one. And let me tell you, in the year I've had this thing, it has not missed a beat. I've so enjoyed it. You know, desoldering components is almost fun now, if that's possible. It's worked so well. And once you use these things, yeah, you'll never go back to solder wick or the little hand plungers. Questions in the review, however, were coming up regarding a station like this versus these standalone desoldering guns. A desoldering station, as most people will know, has the big vacuum pump built right into the head unit here along with the controls. And the gun by comparison is quite small and lightweight. It's a really nice tool to maneuver around on the circuit board. The standalone guns, of course, are a little bit bigger and quite a bit heavier because all those components are built right into the gun themselves. And these are a little bit less expensive. This one's around 120, 130 bucks, whereas this station is around 150 or 160. So if you're curious about these guns versus the stations, if there's much difference, you know, I'll give you my thoughts on using this compared to the uh, station. And of course, we're going to take a deep dive into the gun. We're going to check out its temperature accuracy. We're going to see how much vacuum it actually pulls. And of course, we're going to test it out on a circuit board. Uh, this is a dual layer plated through hole board and for those who want to stick around at the end we'll open it up to take a look at the guts inside. Let's get into it. I want to thank Banggood for sending this so we can all have a look at it together. As usual I will have product link below in the description if you want to check it out, check the specs and everything. This is the 110 volt version. Uh, it's model number S993A uh, made by a company, what is that, Gaji, something like that. I want to say G.I. Joe for some reason. Anyway, you'll see them made by different uh, manufacturers, very similar. Most people will be able to tell this is modeled right off of the uh, Hakko FR300 or 301 desoldering gun. Let's have a look. Ooh, yeah, it's bigger and heavier, no doubt about that, than the station gun. So the way these work, uh, this is the heating element, heats up, it's got a hole in it and there's a tube that goes all the way through into this accumulation tube. You hold it over the pin of the component, full vacuum, pulls a vacuum through the tip and into this accumulation tube. These just slide out by pulling this back and this little cartridge comes out. This is actually plastic, uh, it's not like the desoldering station tube which is glass. And this could be a problem in the long term. I've seen reviews on other brands that these plastic uh, tubes, they start cracking over time because of the heat. Um, so we won't know that, of course, until we've used it for a while. There's the little ceramic filter element at the back, which keeps anything from getting into the pump. There's a little aluminum splatter plate in there. So the idea is as the solder comes, as the molten solder comes flying in here, it hits that splatter plate and solidifies so it doesn't gum up the filter and looks like there's another ceramic filter in the back there so it's got uh, double filtering what feels decent power cord is not silicone sheathed we'll check that out and like i said it's got a one millimeter tip these are uh, 10 millimeter uh, wrench you can use to get them off for a just a crescent wrench so there's your tip one millimeter hole this has got quite a bit more thermal mass than the desoldering station gun so some people might like that better if your component is really pulling a lot of heat now what else do we get in here so we get a couple of uh, ram rods or cleaning rods very important when you use these things before you turn them off you pull vacuum and you put the cleaning rod through the tip so it cleans out all the tube if you have any molten solder stuck in the tube and then it solidifies it can be a real bear to get it out 
So very important, you clean that out before you turn it off. And get a couple of spare filters, so two of the big ones, two of the little guys. What else do we have in here? Jeez, a really nice stand. Wow, that's quite impressive. And the little, little solder cleaning foamy, you just hydrate those, they expand. That's always fun. Nothing wrong with that. And there's your temperature control. It goes from 350 to 450. We'll check that out. And let's just check the weight of these. The 993A, about 420 grams or so, almost 15 ounces, compared to about 156 grams, or five and a half, six ounces for the station gun. Quite a bit heavier, so yeah, I wouldn't want to be using this for prolonged periods of time desoldering. No instructions, by the way, whatsoever come in the box, so they assume you know what you're doing. Let's just check the power cord. Nope, PVC jacketed cord. That's a bit of a fail. If you've been soldering for any length of time, you know eventually the tip gets rested on the cord. So let's plug it in. So we've got a little LED indicator here. Before this tip gets too hot, Hmm, sounds a little bit weak, but let's see what kind of vacuum it pulls. For those who watched the uh, Pros Kit desoldering station review, it was pulling 600 millimeters of mercury for vacuums. So let's see what this one's going to give us. It's almost getting 400... Uh, millimeters of mercury for vacuum. So a little bit less vacuum. We'll see how that affects its function. Let's check the tip temperature accuracy. So let's turn this up to, I'm going to go 390 because that's what I like using my desoldering station at. So we've got it set at 390. And let's just zoom into that, stabilizing at around 380. Let's go up to 400 on the dial here. Seems to be stabilizing around 405 or so. So that's not too bad. So nothing really wrong with temperature accuracy that we can find. Oh, and the little red light goes off when it comes up to temp, when it's reached the temperature. And it probably cycles on and off here. Well, oh yeah. And let's get out that board and try desoldering some stuff. So we're going to start with this uh, transistor. We'll see how that works. So the trick with these is to hold them square over the hole. Let the heat migrate through the hole for a bit. You know, don't just stick it over and start pulling vacuum. Let the solder melt all the way through the hole and then pull vacuum. Not bad. We'll do this capacitor. No problem. I'll do this transistor here. Oh, 
focus. Not bad. I thought maybe with less vacuum it wouldn't work as good, but uh, seems not bad at all. I just thought we'd try one of these relays as well. These can be a bugger, and this is where these things really shine when you can't even get to the other side of the board when you've got a plated through hole. You know, other things you could cut the leads off and use solder wick on the top side and the bottom side, but when you can't get to uh, one side of it, it's a lot more difficult. So we'll try to take out this one relay here. So again, you hold it over, make sure you hold it on long enough so the solder melts all the way through before you pull vacuum. And some people wiggle it a little bit and that just, uh, they find it helps prevent the pin from sticking to the side of the plated through hole find as long as you hold the vacuum over long enough but try it out if you're having a problem you know there's all different techniques everyone has their own preference I need a screwdriver in there there we go where is it there we go another very important thing before you unplug it Power it down, put one of the cleaning rods through, and pull vacuum. So if there was any molten solder in that tube, it won't solidify in there. Oh, and I know some people have asked, can you use these to solder as well? Yeah, you can, but it's a big tip. And if you're in a bind, you can also solder pins with this, but yeah, it's not ideal. Anyway, let's look inside the tube. So yeah, it was just, it's just splattered against the plate there. Let's push that out. So you can see what's involved in cleaning this. Now you don't have to clean it at every use. But there's the little ceramic filter. And there's the little plate. You just clean it off. This is just a little silicone gasket. It's got little holes in there to hold that plate in position. Yeah, just slide it back in the tube. Put your filter back in. Make sure you push it forward so you've got a good seal. You obviously need a good seal around the tube or you won't be pulling enough vacuum through the tip. But yeah, works pretty cool. Let's get inside it now. Before opening it up, I thought we better check to make sure the tip is grounded. Good to see. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Phillips screws to take out. Just fast forward through this. Okie doke, see if she comes off. Something sticking out back in here. Oh, there we go. Ha! Huh. That's pretty cool. So just a little reciprocating plunger on this diaphragm pump here. Do we dare plug it in to see it work? Ah, let's give it a go. Just don't touch any of that circuit board. Ah! Yeah. So just like a, what is this? A big RS 550 motor looks like. This little micro switch, it's really weak. And I don't like how easily this uh, trigger button is depressed. You know, it's not, this has a much better feel to it. This had a much bigger micro switch in it. So yeah, I'm not really too sure about that. Let's pull this circuit board out. 
Otherwise, everything looks good. There's the grounding wire. It's all got high temperature wiring in here, nicely routed. Solder job there looks good. Silicone hose. It's got a spring in it, so it can't, uh, as it's pulling vacuum, it can't, you know, pull pull so much vacuum the hose crushes. Let's just take this board out. So there's a little bit of stuff going on in there. Imagine these are some further adjustment pots, maybe for the high and the low end of your temperature control. All in all, not bad. You know, the plastic is fairly strong. It doesn't appear to be fiber reinforced. Just get a knife out here. Oh no, no, it's fiber reinforced. So that's the inside. We'll uh, get it back together and I'll give you my final thoughts on this thing. Finishing up with a few final thoughts on the S993A desoldering gun. Overall, not bad. It worked, as we saw. It didn't have as much vacuum as the desoldering station, of course. Much smaller pump, so that's to be expected. But it did work. I was using it more last night. And I found the odd time a molten blob of solder would get stuck in the end of the tube here. And I just had to hold the vacuum on for a little bit longer to get rid of that. And that's probably due to the lower vacuum. In the uh, almost year I've been using this, that has never once happened. But uh, happened a couple of times last night with this one. So I think the idea is with it, when you come off the circuit board, just keep the vacuum engaged for a little bit longer. Don't disengage it right away so that doesn't get blocked. Uh, we don't really know about this plastic accumulation tube, how long it's going to last. Like I said, uh, these things do crack, but we don't know if that's uh, going to happen with this one. Only time will tell. It's built well. The micro switch is weak though. I don't like that. It's really easy to trigger. And I also noticed when using it last night, the odd time, uh, my hand would hit the little analog temperature set dial and move it off my set temperature. So it'd be kind of neat to see that dial move somewhere else where it's not as likely to get moved or perhaps recessed, but then I guess you couldn't adjust it as easy. Not having a heat resistant silicone sheathed power cord, that to me is a pretty big deal. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, any soldering equipment that gets hot that uh, you have the potential to touch the cord with the hot tip, it should be a heat insulated cord. The stand is very nice as we saw, maybe one of the nicest surprises of this unit. Now between the two, which would I get? Yeah, I'd still get my desoldering station for 20 bucks more. I just think it's a way better tool. It's lighter, it's nicer to use. You know, this is really heavy, it's bulky. For just the odd little job though, no problem. But if I had to use it for extended periods of time, yeah, the desoldering station would win out. And the other thing with the desoldering station is parts are easier to find. You can buy entire replacement guns, you can buy the tubes, you can buy the tips, the heater element, all the parts for it. Whereas uh, this, the only part I've really been able to find is the heating element and the tips. So, you know, your main consumables you can get, but if down the line repairability is an issue, might be a little bit of a negative there, but not a main, not a main distractor, I guess. And the other nice thing with the desoldering gun over the station is it's very portable. You know, you can take this easily anywhere. Whereas the station, you know, you've got to lug the big control head around plus the gun. So it's not as portable. And if you don't have much bench real estate, that might be an issue as well, which might make these more attractive. And if you don't desolder that often, you know, maybe once or twice a month, not even that, this might be a better long term option if you're not using it that often. Just my thoughts, folks, but uh, if you're in the market for one of these and you were wondering between it and a station, hopefully this will uh, answer a few of your questions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.